This is the Reese & Mueller Transporter 2. It's a box bike, front-loading cargo bike, and the benefit of this is, imagine you have some kids up here, or a puppy, or just some cargo, you can look down, you can interact with it while you're riding. Keep an eye on it. Now, you still have a rear rack, which is great. You could put some panniers on here, you could put a trunk bag, all kinds of possibilities with this, but the steering, the suspension, the way this is laid out, I mean, it's totally custom, totally purpose-built. And I should say, as we get into this, it's fairly pricey. It's fairly heavy as well, about 101 pounds. And then when you start to add things like this box, you have to pay extra for this, or these children's seats. Those are extra as well. There's a tarpaulin, there's like a dog leash option. You know, it's cool. You look down here, check it out. There's like a little storage cubby and the material, this really durable plastic is awesome. All kinds of tie downs and stuff, but it, it becomes pretty pricey. This is almost like a car replacement. Even the rear rack, you gotta pay extra for that. So the bike itself comes in two different colors. We've got white, they also have black, which would be nice. You can see a lot of the, the components, the seat posts, the handlebars, the kickstand, even that steering arm is black. And that's one of the interesting things about this. You turn the handlebars way up here, and then the wheel, it turns way up front. So at, at there are times where this is loaded up and it's you can't see that front wheel super easily and it's a little bit of a a new experience um i should point out they've got this visco set headset down there so it actually slows your steering a little bit it's kind of viscous and that helps this bike to be a little bit more steady the wheels are different sizes so up front we got this schwabi big ben plus with performance line and green guard puncture protection it's got that reflective sidewall stripe this is 20 by 2.15 so it's a little bit wider that's going to give you some stability some float it's not super wide though and that smaller wheel does a couple of things right so it lowers that box it doesn't stick out in front of or above the box so it doesn't block your view and it's gonna be extra sturdy. Smaller wheels tend to be sturdier because the spokes don't have as, as far to go and the possibility of bending and stuff. So I think that's pretty cool. Love that it has a 50 millimeter suspension fork. It's a kind of a basic fork, SR Suntour Moby, and it's got these two preload clickers. You wanna adjust those in tandem, and then it preloads the springs for the weight that you're carrying. So that's perfect for loading up that front box. You might tighten them up if it's a heavy load, loosen them if not. With smaller wheels like this and tires, you get a higher attack angle that kind of runs into bumps and falls into potholes a little bit easier. So it can be jarring. Really nice to have that suspension fork. It does introduce some slop and play into the whole system. And again, the bike's heavy and the whole thing can start to feel a little unwieldy unless it's it's fairly stiff. So I like that this is, you know, it's a sturdier axle, kind of a through axle up front versus a nine millimeter skewer. Love that they're going heavy duty with the brakes we've got. Tektro Ariga Comp 180 millimeter rotors, dual piston caliper, and then direct mount on that front fender, nice mud flap, just really good overall. We'll come to the rear. You can see back here, I love this setup here. There's a little magnet reader for the rear wheel speed sensor, and that's something you'll see on a lot of the recent Mueller bikes. They don't have the magnet that's like spoke mounted, so it's gonna be a little bit more um, just protected, a little sturdier. And you look, there's not a whole lot hanging off of this thing. It's pretty burly. So 203 millimeter rotor on the rear, even larger, same dual piston caliper. Uh, as we had up front, but this is just, I mean, almost overkill. A lot of the stopping power comes from the front as weight shifts forward. But when you have this thing loaded up, I mean, having good brakes matters. There's just more surface area on both of those rotors to cool and to give you a mechanical advantage as you stop. The levers, they've got these balls on the end, sort of like a motorcycle, so they aren't gonna puncture you if you fall down onto them. And it's a big handle that gives you lots of leverage. They are hydraulic, and then a big reservoir here for the oil that goes through. The rear tire is Schwabi Supermoto X as well. It's got the reflective sidewall stripe, a lot of the same characteristics, but this one is 26 by 2.4. So another interesting choice. I see a lot of 20 inch and then 29ers, 27.5, 26 is, it's, it's larger, it's a little bit more comfortable, more air volume, and it is wider than that front tire, but it's not as big as it could have been. So I think they, they made a, a good compromise there to sort of match that lower overall height of the frame and give you more of that strength than a taller taller wheel so good stuff there we still have the reinforcement eyelets that strengthen those rims so you don't have cracking as you true them over time and then we've got the drivetrain 
itself. So this is the NVO low continuously variable transmission, heavy duty that can handle more torque, which is important because we've got a high torque mid-drive motor from Bosch that we'll get to in a second. And we also have like a little retainer pulley wheel here that keeps that gate carbon belt drive on track. We do have that center track design though already. So that's gonna keep it from slipping side to side. Then we got the chain ring up front with a little aluminum alloy guard and then that nice minimalist cover. It's just so custom, so beautiful from Kirana. I think that's plastic with a little bit of metal inside to keep it stiffer. It's gonna protect your pants or your dress from touching that and getting gunked up over time. Nice pedals as well, aluminum alloy platform with kind of a grip tape, almost like skateboarding. Full length, 170 millimeter crank arms on both sides. So this is going to be a very comfortable, natural cadence compared to a more traditional bike. It's, it's gonna feel as close as you can get with a huge box on the front. And I love the reflectors that they've got right there on the sides of the box, as well as on the front lowers on those stanchions. This is a spring fork, steel stanchions. It's, it's not like super high performance, but again, the fact that it's suspension and has the through axle is really nice. Coming back to this continuously variable transmission, you can shift this at any time. Like even if the bike is completely stopped, maybe you were in a really easy gear. You can see this infographic. It's like, oh, this is for climbing hills. And you're like, okay, I wanna go faster. But then you, you stop unexpectedly at a stoplight and you're in that really hard gear, you can shift it down just super easy, just like we did. It can actually be difficult to shift under power sometimes, a little bit more hand effort. This is a mechanical system. Um, and Violo does have like an electronic version as well. This works pretty well. It takes a minute to kind of get used to the infographic. Some of the trade-offs are, it's not quite as tight and responsive and efficient as a chain and a cassette. And it weighs more because there's traction fluid and these orbs inside of that hub. Uh, so it just depends. I mean, if you want that clean Gates belt drive and that really sturdy, completely sealed CVT, no derail you're hanging down, I think this is a pretty good option. Kind of set it and forget it. And anyone can ride this. And including that family concept of you just spent a lot of money, you use it for the kids, you use it for shopping. This is like your vehicle. It's so nice that you can raise and lower the seat very easily. It gets pretty low, and this is kind of a mid-step frame that's very easy to approach and stand over. You can even raise and lower the handlebars up here. There we go. So you've got quite a bit of adjustability here. You can't really change reach the same way you can on the multi-tinker. It has like a, a stem post that, that actually does this. This one, it's just up and down, but it's got that nice go-wing shape, pretty relaxed, similar to the box itself. So when you're thinking about going into doorways and stuff, they engineer these things to be, you know, fairly utilitarian that way. Love the ergonomic grips. They feel very comfortable. The shifter, the bell, the brakes, the cockpit is pretty clean. And I'm just gonna tighten this again. Before we go up to the display, I wanna point out that the motor, the Bosch Performance Line, this offers up to 75 Newton meters of torque. It's pretty good. With the Multi-Tinker, that's one of their other cargo bikes where it's sort of a rear long tail. That one has the Performance Line CX, which is 85 Newton meters. So it's interesting to see how they've outfitted these bikes. Um, this measures your rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, pedal torque over a thousand times per second. There's even shift detection, which isn't super relevant when you've got a CVT or internally geared hub, but just nice to know. I mean, it's very responsive and zippy. This one's balancing performance with efficiency. And it's one of my favorite motors personally. Up here we have the Bosch Power Pack. 545 and this is all smart system so the, the latest generation that works with the e-bike flow app there's an optional upgrade which is the 725 it kind of looks the same both of them have this little handle it's easy to take off the bike i love these it's not quite as hidden as the power tubes but it's light it's easy to access and it's interchangeable and i think there's some different mounting options for the back side of this wall i was looking for bottle cage bosses thinking maybe they could have some around here but i think maybe you can mount something to this board or like a handlebar mounted cup holder something like that these batteries are great there's a four amp charger and they feel pretty efficiently all of Bosch's stuff is very high quality one of the trade-offs is that you know the, the charge port is right here it can get a little crowded with this box but then again you know it's sort of out of the way at least it's not down here by the crank arms I'm always thinking like high and easy to access is nice part of me wonders if you know someone stepped on this if, if it would you know kind of kind of rip off that cover the Bosch hardware is IPX6 rated so it's highly water resistant and dust proof and everything and that's it's pretty well protected if we look under the bike here you know there's there's pretty good ground clearance you've just got this arm and then the kickstand down there it's very sturdy recent Miller bikes are known for just being 
kind of super tough and heavy. And one of the trade-offs is that because they are so customizable, whether it's the colors and the batteries and the drivetrain, even the display, you can get the Intuvia 100 or the Kiox 300, it can be like a three month delay for them to deliver it to your local shop. So I'm here in North Vancouver, British Columbia. It's a beautiful day and City Cycles is letting me, you know, check out their bikes and do this little review. This is what they would consider a demo bike and I think you can buy it as you see, but this is sort of like to get your gears turning and then you, you kind of pick it and have to wait a little while to get it. A nice Sully Royal saddle and then back up here to the display. The Intuvia 100, it's grayscale, it's the cheaper option and kind of paired with the cheaper battery pack here, the 545. It is removable, it's kind of a Bluetooth connection. It has nice little readouts and stuff, adjustable angle to reduce glare. I really like it actually. It, it works great and it's bigger than the Kiox 300 that's color. But color can be nice for that quick feedback on like what level of a system am I using? Red, because you can see the light bar. That's turbo, that's the highest. And then down here, green that's eco that's the lowest so turbo and eco you can actually adjust those using the e-bike flow app there's an auto mode so you don't really have to worry it just kind of responds based on pedal torque there's so much you can do with this diagnostics gps route planning you can use your smartphone to get um, access to a lot of these features including a geofence kind of activation so if you walk away from your bike and you have your phone the bike sort of is unusable it's just heavy and i love that they include this cafe lock here so it's an abus frame lock got the 5755 shield you twist the key like that and then slide this rod through and it secures the rear wheel and whether it's locked or unlocked you can pull the keys out and i love that so they're not just there dangling the whole time that's totally the way to do it they even have i think it's like a plug lock that would would go into here and it's a chain that would wrap around a post or something and make it all even more secure and but still is someone going to really pick up this thing and try to move it if the rear wheel is secured and the electronics are disabled i think they're you know it's, it's a smart system and then the same key unlocks the battery you can even get folding locks and other things that are matched to this code which is wonderful abus does a good job but it can take a while to get those if you're you're in the states so one of the trade-offs, you know, I'm mentioning the smartphone app and how great it is. I would love to be able to charge it off of the e-bike the e system. We've got this nice battery. Maybe you pay more and you get the 725 watt hour. There is a USB-C port down here. See that little wrench? But you can't actually charge from it. It's just for diagnostics. By the way, you can run the whole bike just on that LED remote. You don't need this. And Bosch does sell another phone mount where you could use your phone and charge it, but it's a totally separate mount. You know, tons of options. I just, I feel like this LED remote, it'd be nice if you could plug into it because a lot of people have Garmin's and maybe additional lights and stuff. And I should talk about that. We got nice integrated lights. You see two LEDs back here with side visibility, rear visibility, and it's kind of pushed out a little bit so that if you have bags, it doesn't get blocked. Gotta love that. And then the headlight, this is perfect. I wish more bikes set their lights up this way. It's got a top cut, it aims kind of down, and it's got side cutouts so you can see it from the side so you're more visible, and it's mounted perfectly to the crown of the suspension fork, not the arch. The arch moves, this is unsprung, and this is sprung. And it's it's not blocking, again, it doesn't block your view, it doesn't clutter the handlebars or get blocked by cargo. I mean, this is perfect. Great job, Reese and Mueller, love to see that. This is a free review, I'm just kind of doing it for fun. Hopefully this answers questions. wobbly just because you've got the smaller wheels. Front suspension is really nice to have. Boosting it up into turbo mode. Doing just fine. Wow. 34.9 millimeters on that seat post in case you wanted to go for some suspension post. And then for parking, just kind of push down on this. I recommend putting your foot on the top instead of this because I noticed if I back it up 
then that bar is gonna push right into my foot and it can kind of hurt. I did that earlier. Amazing, at 100 pounds to be able to park it that easily and have it be that stable. Yeah, it's fantastic. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing it with a friend. And check out my website, electricbikereview.com. There's an awesome category and filter tool set that will help you navigate thousands of electric bikes to find the right one for your lifestyle and budget. You can post comments, connect in the forums, and discover local shops so you can go in for a test ride and get your bike set up just the way you want it. I've been running EBR since 2012, providing the best data and limiting the ads. Have fun out there, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.